You, you'd commented about um, the speaker this morning, Bosch. Title was, but okay. He had a lot of provocative ideas in the discussion this morning, and one of the discussion points that I was just elaborating there is that talking at a traditional process, yeah. where a product definition will be fed into engineering, engineering will work away on it, and then it'll come out, and it'll go through testing, and be beaten up and proven, and then eventually it'll get sent to the customer in the next release cycle. Right. And there's anecdotal stories of customers coming back and saying, well, what do you mean I have to wait till the next release in six months' time for that feature that you just told me is already <laughs> built and ready, yeah. but it's waiting for the release. Why can't you come up with a more agile delivery? And that's an actual practical application of agile rather than some people's hack it till it's broken and then <laughs> test the death out of it. Okay. But the reality of the process is engineering builds something, then it goes to a test sequence, it's all very serial. If you bring the test sequence back into the engineering group and cycle around, and that's a precept of some of what is going on in agile development these days, then I can get a shorter turnaround, I can test those features. But why do I make the customer wait to the end of the process? Why not, why not I bring the customer, or at least select customers, closer into the integration here hmm. and have the customer experience that feature? Hmm. Not all the things I was intending to deliver in my next full release cycle, but why don't I deliver that feature? and have the customer give us feedback and get feedback on that feature. Would, would that only work in the in the software world? I mean, could you do it with, uh, I guess I'm thinking of the Internet of Things, but a feature that's got some uh, hardware to it? I think that's a very, very relevant question because traditionally this has come from the software world and that kind of approach because software is so easily changed and hardware hasn't been so easily changed. But the same kind of practices are being brought into ASIC designers where a guy would go off into a dark corner with his headphones on and beaver away on his ASIC for months and months and months. Now we're putting these people into teams. They're working on pieces of the problem. Those pieces can be executed upon and tested. So why don't we put an agile process into some of those areas? You'll see, the technologies we have in hardware have changed over the years. To get custom semiconductors, I used to spend a lot of money. Then we had ASICs and ASSPs and so forth that got us part way through the process and a shorter cycle. And now we go to FPGAs, the cycle time is almost like software. Yeah. Yeah. So there's an opportunity and we see this being brought into hardware and we see this being brought into features that are delivered in hardware because such a lot of that is now software programmable. We have software defined radio, a well understood area, but we also have software defined features in a car. In the example that Jan Bosch talked about this morning, Volvo, in their latest series of cars, can update automatically the software in the car, and they can do that as frequently as every other day. So if they've got an update to the user interface that you see on your infotainment system, they can push that update to the car. The next morning you get in the car, you see that new feature. Wow. And as he put it, well, he's getting used to wanting to get in the car and see a new feature. <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't mean, oh, look, we've got no brakes, isn't that fun? Yeah. But features that are helpful, the navigation system adds a new capability or something like that, I'd like to see that feature. But you also start to bring the customer into the feedback loop. And so you get much quicker feedback. Yeah. And he pointed out in his examples that you might think, I can be more efficient in development. I'll save 10% of my engineering budget by being more efficient. Or... Maybe I'll keep the same money in my engineering budget, but deliver products 10% sooner, hmm. which is going to put 10% more on my top line hmm. of products I sell. Which would you like? 10% savings in your engineering costs yeah. or 10% more on your top line? Yeah, Think about where you're going. There is no amount of efficiency savings that will improve upon delivery sooner and thus the ability to capitalize on your market sooner. And we're in an industry space now where we have customer expectations of faster and faster deliveries. Right, right. The cycle time on a traditional car platform, the underlying platform, a decade. You don't get fast feedback. The platform stays fairly stable for a long period of time. Right. The car models that are built on that platform last maybe three years. In Volvo's case, they reckon a three-year life cycle now. Wow. So. The new models come out, there's a three-year development sequence and out comes a new model on the same original platform. But you're getting faster turnaround of feedback. Yeah. If you can then accelerate that, faster and faster feedback, better and better product, a more attractive product to your customer, 
your customer is going to come to you. So we're almost talking about two different, well, not different things, but one is the, you know, the, the intelligence, I guess, that's being brought into these systems, uh, such as the road and, and conditions. The one before it, though, was this, this idea of oh, user-driven design. And when that first came out, you know, years ago, you know, my engineering friends anyway, and maybe yours would, would say, well, what the heck does that mean? Does that mean I'm going to have some guy off the street looking over my shoulder as I design this board or something? Well, no, actually what you're suggesting is, is that you just get more feedback, not in every case, but perhaps at least the software cases. If you take too long getting a feature out, that feature is no longer as interesting as it was when you first thought of it. The market moves on. The market's moving on at a pace these days where you really need to get your ideas implemented and delivered as swiftly as you can. That varies, of course, from industry to industry. Right. And I'm dealing with, in many cases, people who've got a long history in the particular capabilities they work with, and they don't change all that rapidly. But there are other factors where new things are coming into the industry, new techniques, new capabilities. People want to adopt those. Yeah. They want to be able to collaborate more in a team. Things like Facebook have encouraged them to understand that collaboration can exist. Communication can be sharing information in a much more immediate way. But I don't, don't get that in my day job. I want, I want that level of communication, even if it doesn't have the quality of content or the inverse of quality that Facebook can have. But it has the immediacy, the communication. And that's what we're trying to focus upon in where I'm going with my systems engineering activities. How can I help people to share information more effectively, to get that information where it can be used more immediately so that we don't miss cycles, so we don't ignore a change until it's too late or too expensive to re respond to it properly.